And that's what you call justice. That's what you call true payback. Righteous retribution. Exactly. Hey, it says in, in, in uh, what is it, uh, Thessalonians, man, it says, uh, uh, is it a righteous thing to recompense tribulation, trouble, tribulation yeah. unto them those of those that trouble you? You see? So that's what the Lord is planning out too. And that's also reparations too. Getting back for what these other nations have done unto us. That's reparations. Put them into bondage and, and, and having them to uh, build up our altars and our walls and our towns and our, and our, uh, our bridges and our roads, what have you. Okay? And also them giving us the best of what they got. Because we're going to own the earth. We're going to literally own the earth. It's a part of our inheritance. As Ezra's inquired of the Lord. Yeah. All right. Go on, brother. In uh, Second Ezra 6 and 59. Let's read this. Yeah, it says, um, And they, sh <coughs> they shall possess them in the land of your house for servants and handmaids. Yeah. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. Mm -hmm. And shall, they shall rule over their oppressors. And then they shall rule over their oppressors. So again, that's reparations when you become a ruler. When you sit on the throne. Because we were, we were sitting on the throne before, during the time of King Solomon, during the time of uh, King David, Israel was doing hella good. But we've come down so low. So now the Lord is going to bring that 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 greatness of Israel back again. All right? <laughs> we're going to have our renaissance. Yeah, exactly. Like how Esau had their renaissance, we're going to have our renaissance too. The rebirth of the saints possessing the kingdom. Mm. Go on, brother. Um, so, yeah. And it, might, and it might as well be called that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go on, brother. It says, And it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh shall give thee rest from thy sorrow mm. and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. Let's check this out. Let's just say if Esau gave us reparations, like I said, right? I'm going to um, reiterate what I just said before. Okay, if they, if they give us reparations, again, where is that reparations going to come from? It's going to come from printed money. Which will, um, which will drive prices um, high of your goods. And what are you going to be able to do with the rep what, what, are you, what are you going to be able to do with that, that money that they give to you? You're not going to be able to do anything with it. And on top of that, you're still going to be in slavery under this man. You're still going to have to work for this man. Because this man ain't going to allow you to, to set up your own businesses and set up your own foundations. He's going to want you to be under him and enrich him in, in his economy. Mm. So even if they do give you a loan or some sort of uh, rep, not some sort of, but like some money or grant or whatever, you're not going to get through and stand in the same sort of setting as these devils are going to be standing in. Or as they're standing in. You're not going to be standing in the same place that they're standing in. Excuse me. Go on, brother. If I may add to what you're saying, this is something I was talking about earlier where <clears throat> people don't know how to connect the dots anymore. Yeah. Like you're, you're looking at one situation, you can see, hang on a minute, if this happens, it's mm -hmm. going to cause this, this chain reaction of events. Yeah. Most people are not even thinking that far ahead. They'll just think, oh, we're getting money. Right. Yeah. And they, they'll just take the money. Oh, we've got a reparation. Not yeah. thinking, hang on a minute, this is going to hyperinflate inflate the economy. Yeah. And it's not even going to be worth anything. Uh huh. And that we're still using the money of our oppressors and we're exactly. not going to be free. And when you look at the money, whose who's face is on the money? Yeah. Your, your enemy. His face is on the money. So again, it's not going to change a thing. You're going to still be in the same predicament you're in. It's just that you've got all of this money, but what are you going to be able to do with it? Because you can't do anything with it unless they allow you to do it. That's again, you're going to have to go to their banks to set up your own business. If they allow, if they, if they want you to do that, they can just turn you down. You know what I'm saying? And remember, like the scripture says, for the one of all things, you shall, you shall uh, get That's it from the heathen. Yeah. So let's just say you want to set up your own schools and your own this and your own that. Guess whose land you're standing on? You're standing on a land that is owned by these devils. So even if you want to do something like that, you gotta, you got to go by these devils. So we're not looking for that. We're not expecting these other nations to help us out with reparations because we know that there's it's, it's, it's a bad side to them helping us out. There's yep. something bad behind them giving us reparations if they did. Precept. Go on, brother. Um, there's a saying in the world, this is like the iron fist in a velvet glove. Mm. You know, it's the, the, really, the, it's, it's a powerful strike they're trying to give you, but it's done in a way with like the velvet glove. It's all soft yeah. and people don't realize that actually it's a real strike. But yeah. here's precept. Deuteronomy 28.48 Therefore thou shalt serve thine enemies which Yahweh shall send against thee in hunger, yeah. and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in the want of all things, mm -hmm. and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until right. he have destroyed thee. Yeah, and this devil is so up there in power, 
he's now he, he he's in his own time he will give you reparations. How like come on man, that's how you know J King got no power out here. And and and, and when, it, when, it, when you compare to Esau, Jake ain't got no power when you when you compare uh, Jake to Esau, right? So the way that the Lord is going to set this thing up, man. First and foremost, the Lord is raising us up, as you already can see, right? And uh, we're literally going to be raised up in the spirit, physically. You're going to physically see our us us raising up into actual power, and we're going to take what's ours. We're going to take our reparations. Yep. We're not going to go couching down and begging to these devils. Oh, um, I think you should give reparations and setting up these placards and, and trying to convey a point, which they're not going to hear your point because you being in slavery under them, you're just enriching in their economy. And that's what they want. They don't want you to do anything else other than that. So if you can, brother, get me, um, go back to Isaiah 30, verse 17 again. Khan, just a quick one, if mm. I may. Daniel 7 and 18. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the saints of the <laughs> Most High shall take the that's kingdom it. and pe possess the kingdom forever even forever and ever. Yeah, so again, as, I, as I'm going to say, we're not going to couch down to them. We're going to just take what's ours. We're going to take this earth once we're given that spiritual power. We're going to conquer these nations pursuant to, what is it, uh, Jeremiah 51. And that's going to be the deal. It's not going to be no, oh, we got to go before the UN. Fuck the UN. The UN can keep their money, and they can keep their money in the back of their ass, as far as I'm concerned, because it's been there for a long time, so it might as well stay there. Yeah, and even if you want it, like, let's say you've got a lot of money in your bank. When you want to withdraw that money, you have to get permission yeah. to take your own money out. Exactly. Yeah. So, Jeremiah, which is it, 17? Yeah, 30 verse 17, brother. Come on. Right. Jeremiah 30 verse 17 again. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith Yahweh, because they called thee an outcast, mm -hmm. saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Yeah, keep going. Thus saith Yahweh. Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, mm -hmm. and have mercy on his dwelling places. And the city shall be builded up, her own heap, builded up upon her own heap, mm -hmm. and the place shall remain after the manner thereof. Okay. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry. Yeah. And I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. Mm -hmm. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Okay, go on. The children also, their children also, shall be as aforetime, and the congregation shall be established before me, mm -hmm. and I will punish all that oppress them. And I will punish all that opp oppress them. So we're going to be established as an holy nation, a blessed nation, and our enemies that oppressed us, they're going to be punished. Again, that is reparations. Because with that being said, guess what? We're going to get, we're going to get the payback. We're going to, we're going to be able to get to pay them back for what they've done unto us and actually see the judgment come down upon them. And just by seeing the judgment come down upon them, it's going to be, again, reparations even to the soul. That's right. Yeah. Going, brother. If I may, this is a very interesting thing, because this shows that Esau is not really very spiritual. Mm -hmm. Basically, the most High deals with blood, right? Mm -hmm. If you sin, certain blood has to be shed, be it of, of lambs, of, of goats, of oh. turtle doves, right? Yep. Lord's dealing with blood. Do you think that you can do a sin and turn to your Yahweh Hashem Yahshua and say, okay, I've got 50 pound in my back pocket. Here's a 50 yep. pound note. No, it so don't, don't work, it like, that. work like that. Don't work like that, exactly. So now Esau, with his reparations, he's made the world think that anything could be sold yeah. with FRNs. Yeah. You know, but that's not the way it works. The scriptures say, the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, Absolutely. except by the blood of him that shed it. Absolutely. So what the hell is this kind of recompense and reparations he's talking about? Mm -hmm. are, are, for, are forefathers being hung on trees and lynched and stuff do you think you can pay money to atone for that blood? Yeah, and no. book breaking and all of that stuff. Exactly, but it's, again, it shows people are fucking simple, man. They don't mm -hmm. think, they don't understand, hang on a minute, there's something more than just tangible, yeah. you know, paper money and, and, and stuff like that. And it's really the UN, because the, the UN, they know that they were responsible for why, why we're so fucked up as a people. They, they know this very well. And um, they, they're calling the world now to, to do something about it, because it's, it's embarrassing. And we're talking about it and how this and that has happened to us. So now they have to feel, they feel like they have to change the way that we're being treated. But it's, it's too late now. We're at the end of the world. Um, the signs and wonders are being seen in the sky. And, and then also, I want to say this too. I also think the reason why they're also saying what, what the, the, excuse me, the reason why they want to do that because they're seeing the chariots in the sky. Like Esau watches our videos. Our video, yeah. So you got to put two and two together. You got to come to the conclusion they're watching what we're saying and they're also watching what's going on in the heavens. And they're, and they're thinking to themselves, well, damn, well, what if these people are actually saying it's true? 
And then if you go to the higher ups, they know it's they they know what's saying is true. The Rothschilds, the Oppenheimers, the Rockefellers, all of these super fortunate families, they know what the fuck was saying is true. Yeah. They know. And even the whole Masonic Brotherhood, they know what we're talking about is true. Boom. Yeah. Right, so reading on it says uh yeah. And their children also shall be enforced as a full time, mm -hmm. and their congregation shall be established before me, yeah. and I will punish all that oppress them. Yes, yeah, so we're going to be established, and they're going to be punished. What is their punishment going to be? Oh, them having to go into slavery, and, and uh, having to experience the boot of their ass with spikes on it, sideways. Mm -hmm. It is that boot is going to be, it's going to be our boot. And when, and when, we, when we rise up on the earth, through the Messiah, Yahweh Shai, we're not going to come down out of power no more. It ain't going to be like the Middle Ages, where we ruled for a thousand years, right? And then all of a sudden, we fell and we, we going into slavery now. That's not going to happen again. Once we, once we rise up, okay, let's just go over it. Let's read that again, uh, Daniel yep. 7. Let's read Daniel 7, and um, what's, um, what's the verse? Uh, it says, the saints shall take the, possess the kingdom forever and ever. Yeah, I'll just get it again. And what the Lord is going to do, the Lord is going to shock the world, because see, the world has been taught and conditioned to think that, you know, so-called black people, they're just black folks. Yeah. They're just niggas. They ain't never going to mount any, anything. But uh, the Lord is going to shock the world and show in the world that we are his people and that we are the sons of God as well. Yeah, it was Daniel 7 and 18. It says, mm -hmm. but the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and shall possess the kingdom yeah. forever, even forever So who are ever. the saints? We know that the saints are talking about the Israelites pursuant to uh, Psalms 149. And uh, so that's who's going to possess the kingdom. We're going to possess the kingdom forever and ever. Yeah, I got it's one. It's going to be eternal kingdom. Go on, brother. Psalms 2 and 8. Ask of me and I shall give thee the, he the heathen for thine inheritance, mm -hmm. for, for thine inheritance and the utmost parts of the earth for yeah. thy possession. And the that utmost parts of the earth for thine possession. Because the whole earth is ours. If you can, brother, real quick. Yep. Get me second as with six uh, verse fifty nine. Because the whole earth is ours. So really in our reality, Esau stole the earth and as well as stole our gold and our diamonds and but. our gemstones. And guess what? They're gonna have to give all of that bad boy shit. They're gonna have to give <laughs> all of that back. <laughs> right. Go on, brother. Yeah, this is second Ezra six and it says six and fifty five. Fifty nine. Is it 55 or 59? Yeah, yeah, in both. I'll be 59. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, if the world now be made for our sakes, yeah. why do we not possess an inheritance with the world, and how long shall this endure? Yeah, so by Ezra's question in the Most High, if the world be for our inheritance, in other words, what he's referring to is the earth, then that's what it is. The earth is ours. The earth was created for the righteous men. The earth was created for the sons of God. So... In all reality, the reason why we don't possess the earth right now, because we are, are under the curses, because of the wrongdoings of what our forefathers have done, which we are our forefathers coming back, paying for the sins of what we did in our past life. And a part of that, well, the ultimate of that is just serving slavery under these cave dwellers. Okay? That's what this life is all about for the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. And then having to see your enemy, which have taken up all of your shit illegally, and um, watch them do great. Yeah. Okay, watch them live greatly, excuse me. Watch them live greatly above you. Yeah. Not, not having the care in the world, they could just sit in the park. Yeah. You know, go into town or whatever, enjoy themselves while Jake is out there getting ran over by the police, getting yeah. gunned down by the police, getting wrongfully accused of a crime he didn't commit, Which I being smacked up. upside the head. That's the stuff that we gotta go through while they just sitting on their ass without a care yeah. in the world and they could play with their dogs that. all day. Yeah. Go on, brother. Yeah, so... Um, so even the dog's feeling what we're saying, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because the dog knows, man. It, you know, the animals know what the demons Go on, brother. Back in Jeremiah mm -hmm. 30 and 21. Mm. And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall be of the of And check this out. It says that the nobles shall be of themselves. So we're not going to have noblemen of another nation ruling, ruling over us. us. Like, for example, you got um, the Rothschilds, and they set up your prime ministers for you. And they tell them what to do, right? None of that nonsense is going to be in the kingdom. There's going to be noblemen that's going to govern the Israelites. Israelites are going to govern other Israelites. Yep. That's how it's going to go down. And we're going to be those noblemen being restored back as in the days of, of old, during the time of Solomon and King David. 
That's what Yahweh why Yahweh Shah is setting up in these last days. Yep. He's setting up that falling house, which was once falling, but is now come back together. The restoration of the house of David, which is what we are. Go on, brother. Yes, so it says, And the nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them. Mm -hmm. And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me, saith Yahweh? Mm -hmm. And ye shall be my people, and I will be your power. Yeah, go on. Behold, the whirlwind of Yahweh going forth with a fury, a continuing whirlwind, and it shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. Huh. And the fierce anger of Yahweh shall not return until he have done it, and until he have performed the intents of his heart. Mm -hmm. And in the latter days ye shall consider... And what is the intent of Yahweh's heart? By yeah. sending his son, Yahweh Shai, back here to destroy this place simultaneously, delivering us out of here, so he can replace the curses from us and put the blessings on us. And then through his blessings, we can then be repaired, as we've already read in, in many scriptures. But we're going to read some more scriptures on our restoration. So let's get uh let's get the uh the the the, uh, the book of Joel 2 verse 23. Come on. <laughs> Joel 2 verse 23. Be glad, ye children of Zion. And rejoice in Yahweh your power, mm -hmm. for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and will cause you to come down. Uh, will cause to come down for you the right. rain, yep. and the former rain, and the latter rain in the first months. Mm -hmm. And the floors of the full wheat and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. Mm -hmm. And I will restore unto you the years that the locusts have eaten. Yes. So in other words, all of the labor that we put forth. We're going to get all of that back in return because where do you how do you grow wheat well first and foremost you have to be in the agricultural business to grow wheat all right and uh what happens is that in, in some cases um a curse comes around and uh locusts come around which is the curse of the um of the ground eats up all of your your uh your vegetation your um as you just read brother what's it what is yeah, it, it says, again and i will restore unto you the years that the locusts have eaten mm -hmm. and the canker worm and the caterpillar mm -hmm. and the palmer worm yeah mm -hmm. so all of that all mm -hmm. of those um those insects they eat mm -hmm. they, they eat your your um your vegetation mm -hmm. including your wheat so that just represents our labors right and everything that we work for and the, the amount of time that we work for we're going to get everything back is right now who's eating up our labor these devils right when you go work when you go work for these devils um basically you're enriching them you're enriching their company yes basically so if you let's just say you you work in a construction site owned by another devil again you're enriching his company if you work for sainsbury's you're enriching sainsbury's, their company yeah. huh no if you work for sainsbury's you're enriching sainsbury's yeah so this is the this is the deal so everything everything that we do or have we, or what we have done in this society has been off, been off the basis of making them rich, making them comfortable. But that's all going to change because uh, the Lord is going to restore everything of what we've labored for under each and every captivity. So in other yeah. words, when the kingdom of heaven is set up, we're going to be truly abundant in everything, food, whatever, whatever it is that you want. Yeah. And that's why, as we um, are expecting, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemashai, we beg in our soul, we may not have to do it physically but we beg within our soul and uh you know we ask the lord like lord when are you going to come back that's right when are you going to set up the kingdom just like the of the uh, the disciples inquired if you mm -hmm. can brother give me acts, acts yeah. one verse six and even esther's two esther's is the same thing he's asked the most high when is it going to be the parting of asunder when is it going to be the end of the world so the true men of the Lord, they weren't looking for the change right. that was going to come from men. They were looking for the change of their power. Because they knew, as we do know right now, we know the power that our power possesses, the creator possesses. And we've been reading scripture to, for scripture to scripture to scripture. And we know that this power is so powerful that it can even this power controls all of the elements in this room, including the goings of man. So we know he's going, he's going, he's going to get down and give us our reward, man. Mm. And when he gives our reward, we're going to be all satisfied because of that. Yep. So the Lord is going, he's going to get down in these last days, man. Mm. You're going to see it going, brother. Acts one verse seven. Mm. Acts one verse six. Lucky it says, when they were therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time again restore the kingdom unto Israel? Yeah. And he said. Unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father mm -hmm. put in his own power, 
when ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, yeah. and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, yeah. and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And even on the uttermost parts of the earth. And the disciples and the apostles are on the uttermost parts of the earth, which is where America is, the last part of the earth. So um, we've been, we been, all, we been all, all around the earth. We've been here and there in, in our reincarnations. And we're still doing the same thing that we did in our, in our previous life. Different, different parts of the earth. And now we're at the uttermost parts of the earth, mainly more referring to the brothers in the United States, the so-called United States, which is being divided day in and day out. <laughs> mm. You know? But afterwards, the Lord is going to what? Give us power. It says it in the book of Psalms that they shall, the, the time shall come that they shall be willing in the day of thy power. Roughly paraphrasing that. So there's going to come a time that we're going to be given power, spiritual power. Because we've already received the Holy Spirit, we've already received the Word. So what's going to come after that? Spiritual power. And that's how we're going to get what's ours. But Yahweh Shai has to come back first and set it all off. <coughs> Shall I um, keep reading? Yes, yeah, so go, no, um, go read us 2 Ezra 6, verse 7 to 8. Come on. <sighs> Let me give me some water. Oh, yeah, come on. Second, second Ezra 6, verse 7 to 8, it says, Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first, and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, When Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand first, hand, Jacob's hand first held the heel of Esau. Mm -hmm. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So again, if you actually read what Ezra was saying, what he was basically saying, in other words, he was also inquiring about the kingdom too. But he said it in a different sense of asking the Most High, when is it going to be a part of the Ascendants of Times? In other words, when is the end going to come for Esau? And then um, it was broken down that Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So um, right now, the age that we're in right now, we're in the, we're in the end of Esau. We're, yeah. in, we're in Esau's kingdom and at the very end of his kingdom. So who's going to come into power next? Is it the, is it the Gooks? No. Is it, the, is it the, the Russians? No. Is there nothing more than other Edomites? Mm. So how can Esau come back into power the fourth time? That's not in the scriptures. It doesn't say anything about that. So we know it ain't the Russians. All right. But prophecy, as we have to focus on, which is playing out on the earth is that we're going to come into to the rulership next. We're going to be the ones sitting on thrones next. And again, that's going to be reparations for the so-called black man and Latino Native American man on the face of the earth. Peace out. And his woman too. Go on, brother. This is Psalms 149 and verse 4. Yeah. For Yahweh taketh pleasure in his people and will beautify the meek with salvation. And he will beautify the meek with salvation. So... When the Lord changes us, we're going to be beautiful. We're going to have beautiful bodies. And even when the kingdom is set up, our kingdom is going to be beautiful. So the reparations is in the scriptures. And we're looking for the biblical portions of the reparations. We're not looking for what this devil can give us. We're not looking for that. That's all hogwash. Mm -hmm. that's, all, that's all filth and dirt. We ain't concerned about that, man. Yep. They can have that. They can keep all of that. We're know? looking for this right here. We're looking to have slaves. We're looking to get retribution. And we're looking for motherfuckers to build our empires up, man. Yep. And we're looking to call the shots and to rule the earth and to be sovereigns on the face of the earth and to be a superpower on the face of the earth for eternity. That's what the hell we're looking for. We're not looking for no goddamn reparations. That's right. Nothing less than the best is what we expect. <laughs> uh, let me read this. It says, Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Yeah. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth yeah. and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen mm -hmm. and punishments upon the people. Because let me say something about vengeance. See, when, you, when you're able to get vengeance, <clears throat> I mean, it's sweet, boy, I tell you, it's sweet. Yeah. It's, it's a very sweet thing. That's right. They say it's sweeter than sex. <laughs> so even just by that, that's reparations for the soul. When you're able to get vengeance off of your enemy because your enemy did you wrong, oh, yeah. that's sweet, bro. Like that's healing in itself, knowing that you can, like you can, <laughs> you know, bust a dude's face open. 
because of what he did to you. And you, you was waiting what? It took you what five years, ten years to wait to bust this this dude in the face, and you was waiting, man. You was itching to do something to him, but you just couldn't do it. But now, you can actually do it. So that's how it's gonna be when the Most High gives us that power. Do you think brothers are gonna do when we get that spiritual power? We're gonna go. We're gonna be going like like Esau, like to say ape shit. Yeah. We're gonna be going ape shit. Okay. We're gonna go haywire. Let me use that term instead. We're gonna go haywire. And when we get that power, man, I mean, it's gonna be on. Whole towers are gonna be destroyed. All kind of builders are gonna be destroyed out here, man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You ain't seen nothing yet. You think? Cause see, Esau, they're scared of us right now, but. I wouldn't really be so scared of us now. I would be scared of the fact that we're going to be given power and we're going to take your asses down, man. And then you know what, too? Now, nah, fuck all of that. What they need to be concerned about is the coming of the Messiah. Because the power he's coming with, he's coming with some power that's going to move every nation out the fucking way. He's coming to move shit out. He's coming to move nations out the fucking way. That's what Yahweh Shah is coming to do. And he's coming to, 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 to state his claim and to declare a point that he's the Lord of Lord, kings of kings. He is the Alpha and he's the, and he's the Omega and he is the Mashiach Yahweh Shah. Yep. That's what he's going to declare to the, on the face of the earth. And as well as he's going to show that he has a chosen people. And his chosen people are, as you can see right before you, so-called people of color. All right. That call themselves black, that call themselves Latino, Native American Indians. And he's going to declare to the world that these are the Israelites. And these are the people that you have to have high regards to. All right? Precept. You better believe it. Go on, brother. This is Deuteronomy 32, verse 41. If I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance unto hmm. my enemies and reward them that hate me. And reward them that hate me. So the Lord is going to reward them that hate him. And, and how do you hate the Lord? By disobeying his gospel, disobeying everything that's written in his book. And that's how Esau has governed the earth, by disobeying the law, statutes, and commandments. That's why it says that the whole earth lies in wickedness. Why? Because they're not keeping not one law that's in the scriptures. That's why we're all desolate, we're sick, we're all messed up. Because of how Esau is running this planet. Yep. And there's another one as If well. you can read that one more time, brother. Can't. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 41. If I wet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, mm. I will render vengeance to mine enemies. I will render vengeance to my enemy. And who's the ultimate enemy of uh, Yahweh Shai? These devils, these Edomites. Yep. They're the number one enemy. David don't like them. Yahweh Shai don't like them. So why should the house of David be concerned about <laughs> what's coming down the pipe for these devils? We're not going to be concerned about them. We actually going to want it. We actually want to take part in, in having vengeance with, with Yahweh Shah. Taking vengeance with Yahweh Shah. Mm -hmm. And we will. But Yahweh Shah is going to get all of that smoke first. And we have to wait for him to get all of that smoke. Then we're going to get a piece of that smoke. Yeah, there's more in this. It's good. Mm -hmm. Verse 42, Deuteronomy 32, 42. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, mm -hmm. and my sword shall devour flesh. Mm -hmm. And that, that blood of the slain, of the captives... From the beginning of the revenges mm -hmm. upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants. And he will avenge the blood of his servants by what? Blood. By shedding blood. Blood, blood, blood for blood. Blood for blood. That's how it's going to get down. So like you were saying, brother, how you beautifully put it. They think, the UN thinks that, or well, the chief of the UN thinks that he can call on the world of the, all of these nations to give reparations whether that could come by money or, or giving gold or whatever they got to give us, that can just turn away every everything of the wrongs that they have done, and we can we can we can start all over again with a clean slate, and we can walk into paradise together. That's mm. not in the scriptures. That's not fucking reality. The reality of the matter is, is all of the all of the filth that you've done, Esau, and all of you other nations, you're gonna have to pay for the filth that you've done. You're gonna have to pay for the dirt and the injustice that you've done to the children of Israel. That's what you have to pay for, and it's going to be paid in by what? Blood. If I may, just to add to that point um, about money. See, Esau's got, got along so far by paying off simple niggas to do stupid shit, right? He would just yeah. throw money at them, and a lot of simple niggas would do that. But let's remember the account of Judas, what happened to him. Mm -hmm. After he sold out the Lord for 30 pieces of silver, he felt conflicted in his conscience. To the point like, where he wound up committing suicide. Exactly. And he tried to give him the money back. Yep. And they said, well, that's not our problem. Mm -hmm. That's yours. Yep. You know? So 
you like the Lord was crucified, but he couldn't use that silk, thirty pieces of silver, mm -hmm. to to buy a clear conscience. He couldn't redeem himself after that. So, he, like yeah. you said, he had to kill himself. Yeah. I got I got one for you. Yeah. Uh, so, Rap twenty five and seven says, "There be nine things which I have judged in mine heart to be happy, and the tenth I will utter with my tongue. A man that ha hath joy of his children, and he that he that liveth to see the fall of his enemies." Yeah. Exactly. I don't have to explain that. That explains itself. Yep. So there you go. Yep. I'll read on in this shall I? Go on, brother. It says, verse 43, Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants yep. and will render vengeance to his adversaries. And he will render vengeance to his adversaries. Go on. And will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And he will be merciful unto his land and to his people. So the Lord is going to do two things, and we talk about this all the time. The Lord is going to destroy this civilization from off the face of the map, more in particular America. And then, on his way of doing that, simultaneously, we're going to be delivered from the undying destruction that he's going to bring on the face of the earth. That's how he's going to have mercy upon his people, and therefore he will have mercy upon his land.